Is it really the best time to buy a home in the past 20 years? Well, that's what the HIA came out and said earlier this week, but let me walk you through the three things that you're gonna to need to consider when answering that question for you. But before we kick it off, guys, let me introduce myself. My name is Tim Guest. I'm Australia's leading financial educator and the managing director of Infinite Wealth. I've trained over 18,000 people how to reach their financial goals, whether it be things like home ownership, travel and lifestyle, or early retirement. We do it using only what people currently have available to them right now, and we do it with very high customer satisfaction. Action ratings. This is our Just Ask Tim video series. This is where I could be answering your question live and we got heaps of questions from our followers regarding this report and the comments around, surely, surely housing can't be the most affordable that it's been in the last 20 years. But firstly, uh, a couple of things, just a bit of housekeeping regarding these videos. Guys, we love to see your interaction with these posts. So please like, love, question, angry. If you wanna ask a question of me that I could be answering live, please send that through through one of our social media platforms at either at Infinite Wealth AU or at Tim guest AU and we'll be getting back to you. Of course, if you're a long time follower, welcome back and if it's your first time here, it's very glad to meet you. We hope you get value out of this and I really appreciate your time because I know you could be spending it lots of places rather than just listening to me. But like I said, let's kick through these three things that you're gonna need to consider if um, uh, you're gonna be answering that question about whether it's actually the best time for you to buy a property. Now, let's talk about this HIA report that came out earlier in the week. Like I said, it said that housing is the most affordable it's been since 1999. Now, some people kind of throw their hands up in the air and go, how could that possibly be? You know, house prices are far higher than what they were uh, 20 years ago. And in fact, the reality is, is that house prices have more than doubled in the last 20 years. So at the same time, what we've seen is wage growth has only increased by 113%. So how how is it that people could, you know, how is it that the HIA can come out and say that it's the most affordable? Well, housing affordability, when you think about it, doesn't really actually relate to what the house prices are. What it actually relates to is what you're going to be paying to own a home. So this, this report is based on buying a median home, a person with an average income putting down a 10% deposit, and, and then how much it's going to cost them to service their mortgage every single month. The, the main thing that's changed, not only, I mean, have we seen a slight tick back in terms of the Australian median house price recently with the city Sydney and, market, uh, Sydney and Melbourne market declines. But what we've seen is we've seen two major interest rate cuts. In fact, back in 99, the interest rates that we would be basing it on would be around about 6.7%. Currently, we're talking around about 4.6%. And of course, you guys have been listening to these videos, you know that there's banks out there that are currently doing 2.99%. So of course, you wanna get a hold of that, all you gotta do is reach out to us. But when we actually look at what it's gonna to cost to service that loan, because of the interest rates being so cheap as what they are now, it's actually gonna cost a person less than it would've back in 1999 to service that loan. So really that is the true measure of housing affordability and being that it's gonna cost such a small amount out of people's pay packets, we're certainly gonna to start to see people rush back into the market as we've already seen done since the federal election, since the RBA has dropped their interest rates and of course since we've also seen those changes from the Australian Prudential Regulatory, uh, regu uh, regu oh, I'm struggling to say that word, Regulatory authority, basically that's uh, they've, they've reduced what banks need to allow for in a buffer when it comes to borrowing a loan, very intelligently as well. So that's the first thing you're gonna to need to consider. The second thing, and this is probably gonna relate more so to people who are owner occupiers, and I'm gonna talk, particularly because this video is going out to our per people in our Perth audience, I'm gonna talk about the Perth market here. Now, what we've seen over the last few years is something that's very rare, in fact, very unique. Now we saw Perth, first of all, entering the downturn phase of its market, which was entirely due to do as part of its cycle. The reality is, is that downturn that we would normally see in this stage of the economic cycle would normally run around about two to three years, not being a major downturn. And we normally see historically around about 12 to uh, 10 to 12 percent off the peak. Keep in mind guys, that's not per annum decline, that's off the peak. Spread over three or four years, you're probably looking at around about a 3% per annum decline. Okay, however, what was unique about this particular part in the cycle is that we saw the government get involved and wanna start restricting finance because the Sydney and, market, the Sydney and Melbourne markets were really start to running away. Now often what we see when gov we see government intervention is we see the government's overreach. So as a perfect example, so the, the restrictions I'm talking about are things like interest only loans, high LVR loans, uh, and investor loans. A perfect example I can give you is with regards to the interest only loans. Prior to these restrictions coming in, the government, that all new loan, 38% of all new loans were interest only. The government wanted to get it down to about 30%, APRA I'm talking about when I refer to the government. Okay, so only re reducing that by 8%. After putting in the restrictions, it actually dropped all the way down to 14%. So certainly an overreach when it comes to what the government were trying to do in impact the market. Keep in mind that this was about slowing down the Melbourne and Sydney markets. 
The flip side was, is that Perth was already in its current downturn, and what it did is it actually forced Perth further into a downturn that we would normally see in this part of the economic cycle. So far what we've seen is we've seen across the median house price in Perth approximately 18 to 19% off the peak. So certainly a much deeper downturn than we're used to. At the same time it means that the, the, these house prices are now at the same level that they were 10 years ago. The reality of this, and this has now affected the confidence in the Perth market. So what we've now seen is that the Perth market now has the second highest confidence of any capital city in Australia. So it's very unusual that we see a backwards tracing market this far. Obviously what it means is there's a lot of room to move moving forward. Of course, we're starting to see our internal net migration numbers tick up and really that has impacted the media, uh, the uh, the vacancy rate. If we look a couple of years ago, the vacancy rate in Perth, about 7.2%, now 3%. That internal net migration has really taken up a lot of that rental vacancy and we're now starting to see that push into the actual uh, the, the housing market as well. So the stats in terms of that, what we've seen over the last two years is we've seen um, across 160 odd suburbs in Perth, we've seen increasing sales volumes. We've also seen 53 suburbs, uh, that is 40% um, of the Perth market or 40% of suburbs in the Perth market are now worth more than what they were 12, uh, 12 months ago. So with reality, in terms of the owner-occupied market, there's never been a better time to get into the Perth market. Also being in terms of that housing affordability, Perth also sits as one of the most affordable markets in Australia. So from an owner-occupier, uh, my recommendation, guys, you're never going to see a better time to get in the market. Now's the time that you want to be doing that. At the same point in time, we want to talk about investors as well, because owner-occupiers, if you're living in Perth, obviously you've got to buy a house in Perth. Investors, and of course, intelligent investors would be looking Australia-wide. Intelligent investors don't just go and buying in their backyard because that's familiar. What they do is they make their decisions based on numbers, not based on emotions. At the same time, we saw a report come out earlier this this week from BIS um, Oxford Economics. Uh, so this is a report that gets put out around about this time every single year and what they effectively do is they're predicting the growth in the major capital cities over the coming three years. This report has come out and this, this report is uh, certainly the, for the time that I've been following it now, which is probably a good six, seven, eight years now, uh, their estimates have been certainly um, very accurate. So what uh, BIS Oxford Economics have come out is that they're expecting to see 20% growth in the Brisbane market. Now the primary factor that is driving this is the internal net migration. The internal net migration in Brisbane is now the highest of any state in Australia or any capital city in Australia and ultimately this demand for housing is what's going to support and, uh, and underpin the growth in that market. So. Flip side, we're going to see around about 7% in Perth over the next three years. So certainly when it comes to investing, Brisbane offers the best alternative uh, uh, for your uh, your returns. Okay, So they're the three things that you, you kind of really need to think about. I mean, housing affordability, it's the, 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 the lowest it's been in 20 years. So of course, that's going to start to see people move into the market. If you're an owner-occupier, the market is certainly now turned around in Perth. It is a fantastic time to buy. and. Um, I, uh, I assert that's actually probably it's going to be the bet. You're never going to have a better time to buy than you what you've got right now. For the investors, while Perth offers some excellent opportunities right now, Brisbane is really where you can secure. Uh, your best growth, of course, though, you really need to have an effective plan when it comes to your investment strategy. It's one of the things that I see most investors, or the biggest mistake I see them make, is they don't have a plan. And of course, your plan is what really informs you about what's gonna be the best investment for you. So guys, that, that really covers a bit longer Just Ask Tim video series this week than normally, because I really wanted to cover off those three points, the three reports that have come out. Just a couple of things before I go. If there's a question that you want me to answer, send it through on one of our social media channels, you know, at Infinite Wealth AU or at Tim Guest AU will get in contact with us and I could be answering uh, answering your question live. Of course, we'd love to see your interaction on these posts, so please like, love, angry, uh, comment, question. Uh, please share this video with your friends and family so they can get the benefit of it as well. That's it from me, guys. I'll be coming at you on Thursday or Friday with our week in real estate with all the top stories happening from the week in finance and real estate. But that's it for me, guys. Have a great night and I look forward to speaking to you soon. Good night.